This is it, guys. This is the world debut of the all new ninth generation 2025 Toyota Camry. In this video, I'm gonna show you two cars, XLE model right here, and XSE, the sporty version of the new Camry. And also, this is an exclusive because at the end of this video, this world debut, I'm gonna pitch over to Tommy, who can show you several generations, other generations, older Camrys, so you can see not only the all new ninth generation one, but also get some perspective of where the Camry came from. And you might be saying, okay, so the world in the US is all about cro um, crossovers, SUVs, trucks, big pickups. Well, sedans are also very, very important. For example, Toyota through nine months of 2023 sold approximately 217,000 Camrys in the USA. So they, they sell a lot of them. It's a highly competitive segment because there's also Honda, Nissan, Hyundai, Kia, Chevy is still selling the Malibu. So this is still very, very important. So let's dig in. Let's take a look at the profile of this sporty XSE, which is kind of near the top of the range for the new Camry. So if you look at the overall dimensions of the car, the wheelbase is about the same as the previous generation of the Camry. The width of the car is about the same, but the length is about 35 millimeters longer than it was before. And of course it has all new styling. This XSC right here has 19 inch wheels, 235, 40 R19s. You can see the latest design, there is the size. And take a look at the rear styling as well. And there's also something big going on here. So of course it's a new car, new powertrains and this it's all hybrid all the time now so every new 2025 camry will have a gas electric hybrid powertrain inside of it no matter what it is it will have two versions all wheel drive like you see here or front wheel drive so also the v6 is no more so if you um, if you remember the current generation has a three and a half liter v6 that's not gonna be available anymore in this generation. And also the TRD, kind of the really, really sporty one, um, it's not a part of this debut. So there's gonna be four trim levels and I'll go over a little bit of that as I go along. But let me pop the hood and kind of show you a little bit, I guess, about this powertrain. So if this car was a front wheel drive car, the power rating is 225 horsepower. Let me see if I can do it gracefully. Yes. And then for the all wheel drive model, it's 232 horsepower, which is actually, um, if you compare it to the previous outgoing Camry, uh, you have more power in the all wheel drive car by about 30. And of course it's a different all wheel drive system now. It's electrified. So let me close this up. Let's take a look at this car a little bit in more detail. So they're saying this is the fifth generation of their hybrid system, which means according to Toyota, they also made the motors, electric motors, a little bit more compact, a little bit lighter. And overall the car dynamically and efficiently should be the best ever. Of course, it's a, it has to be, it's the all new generation of the Camry. The current Camry has an MPG rating of 52, and we don't have the final numbers on the MPG on this new one. Is it gonna be 52 for the front wheel drive model? Is it gonna be you know, a little bit less for the all wheel drive model? We'll have to wait and see. But this world is very competitive, like I said, because the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid uh, also has 52 MPG as its uh, rating, so that's really important. How about we get inside? Let's start right here with the XLE and then we'll move on to the sporty one. Uh, wow, okay. So I'm about six foot three inch tall. I'm super comfy. This car has a panoramic sunroof and basically an all new interior. This immediately struck me, this kind of quilting here 
and kind of the waterfall design as the dash kind of waterfalls down into the center console. It's an eCVT, continuously variable, electronically controlled transmission. We have several drive modes, eco, normal, sport, EV mode for short bursts of electricity. And by bursts, I mean not high performance bursts, but just electric driving. This is a prototype pre-production car and it's an accessory mode. That's why you may see some different messages and lights. So don't pay attention. Please don't comment and say this is broken already because it's a production pre-production model. We have some pretty useful and very simple and intuitive climate control system right here. This has a 12.3 inch gauge cluster. Up top there, there is also a heads up display. You can kind of see it here. It's not enabled right now because the power is not on. I mean, the engine is not running. Um, and this, the infotainment system. Of course, this is Toyota's system that they've had um, on most of their new models. And it's back here. It's pretty responsive and, and nice, even in this pre-production state. Cup holders center armrest there's some kind of few items down here let me check the back seat space it should be approximately the same as before rear vents i've got rear usb a and usb c ports it's really hard to see thank you zach and i am sitting behind myself relatively comfy my hair is hitting the ceiling just a little bit and my knee is touching the seat in front of me but i kind of push the front seat a little bit more further back than i kind of need to so even with the front seat almost pushed back all the way i still have pretty good space for kind of a larger larger guy we have here cup holders center armrest and then let's transition to the xsc really quick Let me open the door for you. And we also have to talk about their driver assistance technologies because there is a lot of them. Let's look at this. You know what? I really love this red interior. <laughs> I kind of, I'm starting to like more color in vehicles and just, you know, brings life to the vehicle, I think, because most of the vehicles are now either white, black, or gray. And I'm pretty happy to see that they're injecting some color. Let me take some notes because their latest driver assistance technology suite is pretty extensive. It's called Toyota Safety Sense and um, 3.0. It's got pre-collision with pedestrian plus assist, radar enabled cruise control. In a premium package like this, you see there's a monitor here on top of the steering column and that's also for traffic jam assist it's a feature that is a hands-free feature for driving in traffic in speeds about under about 25 miles an hour so kind of slower speeds but the sensor is here we're looking at your eyes because you still have to have your eyes on the highway in front of you it goes on lane tracing assist of course lane departure alert sorry i'm reading road sign uh, assist auto high beam proactive driving assist which kind of helps you steer into your lane uh, also front cross traffic alert lane change assist front and rear parking assist um, some of the features i'm listing now including traffic jam assist as part of the premium package and of course panoramic view monitor yeah there is no way i can remember all this um, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of driver assistance technologies but this car still does not drive itself still have to wait a little bit for that jbl uh, stereo system nine speaker you can see kind of the door cards right there all right now i'm gonna wrap up outside with pricing and availability so the new 2025 toyota Cam camry will be on sale in the spring of 2024 so it's just a few months away pricing is not available yet so what is what is this about well 
like I said, it's highly competitive market. The current hybrid starts at around 28,000 uh, after destination charges. Some of the competitive cars, sedans in this segment, also start in a similar price range. So I'm guessing Toyota will be in the similar price range for this as well. Uh, of course, after you load it up with all the features, um, all wheel drive, luxury features, and so on, the pricing will be higher. So I'm really curious to see exactly what the performance is, how it drives, what the price is and efficiency. So stay tuned for that. The driving of this car will be, I'm assuming in just a few months. Thanks for joining me. Now I'm gonna toss it over to Tommy. He'll tell you about the previous generations of the, of the Camry. I'm really excited. I haven't seen that video yet. So I wanna watch that with you. And of course, alttfl.com for everything automotive in one place. Thank you. The Toyota Camry has a long lineage dating back to 1983 here in the US and today Case and I are outside of Plano, Texas where Toyota has invited us out to check out a bunch of different generations of Camry so we can track the progress throughout the years. Let's check them out. To see the first generation of Toyota Camry we're actually here in Toyota's own headquarters building where they have some of their most special cars lined up. And this first generation Camry went from 1983 to 1986. It is important to note that the Camry name first debuted in Japan on the Celica Camry, but this Camry was the true first full-on Camry model. Now, when the Camry came out, it slotted above the Corona and below the Cressida in Toyota's lineup, and the name Camry is actually derived from a Japanese word meaning crown. Now, there were just a few different engine options that you could have here in the Camry. You could either have a 1.8 liter or you could have this two liter fuel injected four cylinder, 92 horsepower, and Motor Trend tested this zero to 60 in 12.7 seconds. So speed was not the goal, but 31 miles per gallon city, 43 miles per gallon highway, which was pretty impressive. And you could also get a 1.8 liter turbo diesel option on these as well, and either a four speed automatic or a five speed manual transmission. Stepping inside of this Camry, you can see this very early interior, which is a rad thing to get to check out. It's got this very boxy dash, and my personal favorite thing about this car are these sliders here for the equalizer on the radio. This is super old school, kind of thing that you just don't see anymore, but back in the day, that was probably a pretty badass feature to have. You've also got this two-spoke steering wheel that's completely open up here at the top, so you've got a really good view of your gauges. But something crazy about this car is, is just the size of it. This is 16 and a half inches shorter than the current Camry, so it's a much smaller vehicle. Starting price was $7,988. This is a second generation of Toyota Camry built from 1987 through 1991, known internally as the V20 Camry. And this was a very significant generation of Camry for Toyota because it was the first Camry assembled right here in the USA in Georgetown, Kentucky. This Camry was the first ever to cross 200,000 in sales in 1988, and it was also the first Camry station wagon, which was an option, and also the first Camry to offer all-wheel drive in a model called the Alltrack. Now, all-wheel drive disappeared after this generation, and it didn't return until 2020. The second generation of Camry was the first Camry ever to offer a legendary Camry feature, the V6 engine. Now, in this model, it was a 2.5 liter that made 155 horsepower. This particular Camry is powered by the four-cell a 2 liter that made 112. There was also an option for a 1.8. Now talk about time capsules. This particular car is from the Toyota Heritage Fleet and it is a brand new Camry from 1989 with under 170 miles on it. And the first thing you notice, the automatic seat belts. What a throwback feature from the 1980s that what we haven't seen in years. But the interior on these cars were so simple and so 1980s. First of all, we've got red kind of this burgundy dash color on this burgundy velour seat. Very 1980s, but very comfortable. This is something that we miss in a lot of cars, are just comfortable seats. Nowadays, they all have to be tight buckets, but not in the old days. Of course, lots and lots of fake stitching. That seems to be the trend on the inside across the dash. Here on the panel, you see just tons of fake stitching. And then, of course, the iconic Toyota shifter and all the little button sliders for your climate control and your radio. Oh, man. That's a blast from the past. Dude, by far the coolest part about this Camry are the automatic seat belts, but you still have to extend the left belt portion. Yeah, the bottom part is still manual, so um, I don't know, at least it makes sure that your top half is guaranteed. 
to be protected. Now this is such a time capsule. So this is a Camry from the Toyota collection with 168 miles on it. And what do you think of this blast from the past interior? You know, I wish that the majority of modern car interiors were this comfortable because this fabric on the seats feels fantastic. It sure does, yeah, and you just kind of sink into it, but it's not like floppy. It's just supportive, but in, in the kind of way your grandma's chair would be supportive. Now, the next thing I noticed driving this car is how big the windows are and how low the belt line is. So you get a fantastic greenhouse, especially with these thin pillars. Yeah, a lot of glass, but it's still a relatively compact interior. I mean, if you look, I can bridge the gap between our shoulders with my hand like this, I promise you in the brand new Camry, it's not gonna be like that. No, no, and not a ton of power either, right? Under 120 horsepower, <laughs> enough power to get you going and keeping up with traffic, but this was in no ways intending to be a sporty model unless you got the V6, which was a really cool option. Now this third generation Camry is important for a particular reason, it's because this marked the first time that the Toyota Camry was different for the U.S. market than it was for Japan's market because here in the U.S. we wanted a bigger vehicle and Toyota's phrase with this car was that we couldn't leave well enough alone. So they redesigned it and these went from 1992 to 1996. In addition to this third generation Camry being six inches longer than the previous generation and two inches wider, you could also get it in not only a sedan and a wagon, but for the first time ever, you could get this third generation Camry as a coupe. Probably the thing that this third generation Camry is known best for is it being absolutely unkillable. These cars mechanically are super solid, super reliable, and a lot of that comes down to your engine options. Now at the base, you could get a 2.2 liter four cylinder with 125 horsepower. This Camry, however, has the three liter V6 with 188 horsepower. Stepping inside of this third generation Camry, we have an XLE model. And not only is this the nice luxurious trim, you can see wood trim here on the dash. This interior is far, far more modern than the second generation car that we have right next to it. This was a huge step forward. And not only was this car more modern, but you could actually still get a manual transmission option. The easiest way to tell this third generation Toyota Camry from the rest of the Camrys is how round it is. It's really a lot more bubbly than any other generation of the Camry. Next up, we come to the fifth generation of the Toyota Camry known internally as the XV30. And this was a huge departure over the fourth generation, a much more modern looking car sold from 2002 to 2006. And this one is the first model year, 2002. These Camrys were ubiquitous with us back in the day and I have to say the design has aged very well. A very simple piece of design. Now the engine options in this generation of Camry ranged from a 2.4 liter four cylinder all the way up to a 3.3 liter V6 that pumped out over 200 horsepower. This one is just your standard 2.4 liter right around 157 horsepower. Now this comes from what I call the tuft era of Toyota leather. So on the doors we have kind of these wrinkled leather panels which looks very old manny but back in the day it was known for being pretty luxurious and this is an XLE trim so not only do we have the leather seating surface but we have wood trim or faux wood trim everywhere on this interior and it's very upright very vertical interior this Camry had a much higher driving position than the fourth gen allowed for more rear seat room and these interiors pretty indestructible now this was also the first Camry you could option with an in-dash navigation system although this one doesn't have the screen it does have a six disc CD changer though automatic climate control heated seats and a pretty cool set of gauges where the temperature and the fuel are inset in the speedometer and the tachometer. All right, Case, jumping into the fifth generation Camry. Now look, this is not a car known for its driving prowess. It's no means a sports car, but it was a comfortable, reliable sedan. Yeah, and you can tell why people went for this car because again, I mean, we still have really good sight lines out of this car. A lot of glass, which makes it easy to drive. It's still a very comfortable car. We've got very couch-like seats here. This was by far the most dependable sedan in its segment that was decent looking, handled fine, and was very comfortable, and that was enough. And one other thing I wanna point out is this car is the 10 millionth Camry made, this exact yeah, car. Which is pretty special, and uh, well, you know, we did it in the second gen, so let's see how it accelerates. Better than the second gen. Yeah, definitely better. Still not a fast car. <laughs> 
but yeah, no problem getting up to speed. Also a little behind the scenes, if you're wondering why we're driving around a parking lot here, it's because like this being the 10 millionth Camry, these are very special cars. They need to stay here on Toyota's campus. I'm sure most of them are not currently registered. No. So that's the reason that we're driving in this kind of confined space is because it's really a pretty special opportunity to get to drive them at all. Now the sixth generation Toyota Camry was a huge deal when it came out in 2007 and it ran all the way to 2011, but 2007 was the biggest year for this car with over 473,000 units sold. Now something unique about this particular model of Camry is the bluish tint that you see here in the headlight. And that's because there's something very important about this generation of Camry. It was the first time that they offered a hybrid here in the Toyota Camry, which is what this model is. Now a hybrid Camry like this one that you see here when it was released was rated at 40 miles per gallon, which was a huge number. However, ever since then, the EPA has changed the way that they rate vehicles. So this is now rated at around 33 miles per gallon. Now with this 2.4 liter, and the hybrid system, you had an output of about 158 horsepower. However, you could opt for a 3.5 liter V6 in this car that got you 268 horsepower, zero to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Inside of the sixth generation Camry, you can see a much more modern interior still. This is a huge leap forward in terms of looking futuristic. You had this funky kind of clear plastic around this screen and a screen like this built into the dash pretty nice to have back in 07. You also had an additional small clock and things up at the top of the dash, pretty futuristic looking gauges, this brushed metal trim. It's a really, actually even to this day, a, a fairly cool interior to sit in. So Case, we are now in the 07 Camry and I remember distinctly when this car came out, I was pretty impressed with the interior on this car. We actually had just started reviewing cars and I remember sitting in a hybrid as a kid looking down at this blue finish and the plasma cluster thinking that was some pretty space age stuff. Yeah, it's actually pretty high tech feeling in here and uh, still feels pretty modern to this day, I'd say. Right, and this really previewed Toyota's transition to hybridization across their entire lineup. I mean, sure, there had been other hybrids that Toyota built until this point, cars like the Prius, and then I think the Highlander came before this car as well. But having hybridization in the Camry was a big deal because they sold so many hundreds of thousands of these cars. Yeah, I mean, having a hybrid just made this all that more practical because especially in the era that this car was around fuel prices very important and so having a car like this that still feels substantial it's pretty good camry hybrid offered people a comfortable four-door sedan that wasn't a prius exactly yeah and that brings us to the current camry this is a 2023 camry but the eighth generation was introduced back in 2018 and this generation was both a huge step up in style and size over previous generations this 2023 camry is a few inches longer than the first camry hybrid which is the sixth generation but it can still achieve over 50 mpg versus the sixth gen which realistically would do like mid 30s so the toyota hybrid system has improved dramatically over the years as has total system power this car with the four cylinder hybrid makes 208 horsepower and keep in mind you can also get this car in the gasoline form with all-wheel drive the first time since the second gen now one thing which toyota elevated when they introduced this generation in 2018 was the style on the interior and this car has gotten seriously luxurious not only in terms of features with heated and ventilated seats and the like but also the design is kind of this cool curved panel that stretches its way across the dash the large central screen and just the overall material quality and fit and finish is top-notch in this car now the technology is looking a little dated in this 2023 model hard buttons along both sides and you've got my favorite feature volume and two knobs now granted the graphics not the most modern in the world but overall a very simple and easy to use system okay stepping into the uh, the current gen of camry um this car is by far the most soul or at least the most design on the inside you know what i mean yeah it's definitely more than just a, a bland straightforward dash they did have some fun with the shapes that that are here on the interior. It's kind of cool. Um, so it's a much nicer car. It's also by far the biggest, the most insulated, and the most comfortable. Yeah, so kind of like we were talking about earlier, I mean, before I could, I could make our shoulders touch by doing this. Now, if we're both in our seats, you can see it's probably double that distance roundabout. So yeah, it's a lot more spacious here. The other thing that you just 
I think you forget because these cars are so commonplace is the number of features that you get in one of these that even a lot of really high-end vehicles don't have, like ventilated seats, like the wireless charger. I'm not gonna name names, but I was just in an $80,000 truck that didn't have either of those things. Here it is in a Camry. Apple CarPlay, right? Leather steering wheel, perforated leather seats, lots and lots and lots of features in a fairly affordable price in a car that'll still do as a big car, over 50 MPG. And matting it, it's really, it's not that slow. It's not that slow at all. <laughs> so you went grabbing for the I went for the, the handle. Oh, you know what, what handle? <laughs> yeah, because you get that push of the electric motor that it really helps kind of bolster the performance of this vehicle. So no, it's not it's not a 270 horsepower sixth gen. One thing I do want to point out, Case, is that the Camry wagon's dead, yep. as is the Camry Coupe, which became the Solara. That's true. So you're kind of consolidated basically to just this configuration, obviously different trim levels, but they've narrowed it down to the spec that most people were going to buy anyway. Yeah, the four-door sedan. You know, it's really cool to see all these Camrys lined up side by side because it just goes to show that even though the designs, the powertrains, the sizes have changed over the years, the Camry has still stuck to its core values of affordability, reliability, safety, and comfort. And I'm excited to see where Toyota goes next. As always, this has been Tommy, Behind the Camera Case. Head over to alttfl.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.